Hey y'all, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back to season three of Mouthful TV. I'm so excited for this season. We have so many special guests in store for you guys. Um, and we're also coming to you again, sponsored by A Taste of the Culture. So make sure you guys check out atasteoftheculture.com and use the promo code Mouthful for 25% off your subscription. That subscription includes black owned wine, spirits, mixers, accessories, and so much more. So make sure you guys, again, go to atasteoftheculture.com for 25% off your subscription. How have you guys been after this little break we had? Good. Um, I've been I living. Been, I miss y'all, but I've been enjoying the break. Huh. <laughs> good deal and i also want to welcome kg of coastline magazine hey. joining us on today how you doing man doing good how y'all doing today thanks for having me good thanks, thanks for, for joining, joining us, us. Yeah, of course of course i'm happy to be here okay i'm just like we got coastline i don't know about y'all right that's a good look all right y'all i appreciate it Awesome. Absolutely. Well, Des, I want to get into this because I've been thinking and society has like warped our way of thinking. So one of the things that, you know, Mouthful talked about was broken homes and we got real deep into it. So of course we were like, well, let's make this an episode and what broken homes really are. And for me, y'all, I started thinking like, why does society make it where a broken home has to be a missing parent? But I was like, that's just my way of thinking that that's not necessarily the case. So what do y'all think? Um, I think a broken home can be um, so many things. It could be a missing parent. Um, it could be your parents, you know, having a toxic relationship, um, you know, not getting along for the better of themselves or or like not getting along and the children seeing that and that you know playing kind of a role in how they kind of grow up and view relationships so um well those are the top two for me I know <laughs> I think I, I kind of correlate with like on both ends of those like I've experienced both of those so um yeah but that, that's my definition of broken homes I, I definitely can, can agree to that. Um, more so because in my experience, I don't have a relationship at all with my father. Um, and my mother, you know, I've known her to be a parent, you know what I mean? But she was there, but she wasn't always present, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, and so she, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, you know what I mean? Because at the same time, I, and I think that a lot of broken homes that still have two-parent households, um, and I could be wrong, but in my opinion, they're a result of wanting to stay together for the sake of the children. Mm -hmm. And that's not always healthy. And um, it that affects you for a very long time until you are able to acknowledge and deal with that, you know, as a child being in a broken home. So it's like, it's really hard. And it's like a situation where we need to figure out how to break that stigma. You know what I mean? Like if, if y'all are not able to be in a healthy relationship, um, don't do it for the sake of the children, just to see two parents physically being together because there's also mental and emotional that coincides with that as well and kids are smart they are sponges and i don't think people give kids enough credit of what they really like you said take in like they see that you know and then they grow up in their teenage years or you know adult years and you wondering what happened y'all are what happened y'all tried to stay for the kids you <laughs> should have let go like, come on. But I know for me, um, definitely, my mom was a single mom raising three kids, but having my dad around my biological father, um, it was trash. Like in the home, like, you know, <laughs> sir, you shouldn't have been there because you gave my mom hell, you gave my brothers hell. 
I was too young to realize, but some of the stuff that he said, like I knew it wasn't healthy. Like, what do you mean these aren't my brothers, you know? Because of um, different dads type of deal. But why you would- what he said? Yes. And isn't it crazy? That's what I'm saying. Isn't it crazy what kids remember? I still remember that to this day. I went to go and play with my older brothers. So we're um, 12 years apart, both of my brothers and I. And he said, you can't play with them. Those aren't your real brothers. And I just wow. cried my little heart out, you know? And I'm thinking like, why would you say that to a child? And why would you put, you know, this household through hell like that? So I can only imagine them being older, what they took in and the, you know, the toxic environment. So my mom was better off being single. Right. right. She really did provide. So, yeah. I forgive him, you know, God rest his soul, but that was a shitty thing to say. Right. It absolutely was. And forgiveness yeah. is a big thing. Like you can't continue throughout your life holding on to those traumas. You know what I mean? You have to do your work and make sure that you let that go because again, it affects every aspect of your life if you don't. Definitely. Thanks. I mean, I can agree. Everybody, I had a two parent household, but kind of similar to this. My, my father was there but he wasn't active or present. The only time he was really involved in my life was during basketball season mm-hmm. when I had a game coming up. But outside of that, he never taught me how to, you know, change a tire. My mom was the one outside cutting grass. My mom was the one helping me with schoolwork. My mom was fixing the car. Like all he did was pay bills. So I felt like he thought that was enough. So, you know, it kind of affected me because I was in a 10 year relationship and I didn't understand like what a, what a household is supposed to look like. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. like. My mom did everything. So as long as I paid the bills, I thought I was good. But, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't active. And I, I, I learned that that's all I knew. So, you know, it took, you know, having to process that, talk to my mom and, uh, you know, to kind of get through it. And now I know what a man should be doing, you know, and how a household should look. And, you know, you should do more than just pay bills. You should be active in, you know, your partner's life and the kid's life and, you know, do more. So it, it definitely affected me growing up, true. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's crazy that you say that because I was also in a relationship for 10 years and I realized that I didn't know what love looked like. Yeah. And I struggled a lot with finding myself just going through the motions of what I thought what a relationship was mm-hmm. and not taking into consideration what the other person needed. Right. Um, and so it's like until I acknowledge that and, you know, had it starts with the conversation of, you know, what is it, what is it that you need, you know what I mean, to kind of change or break that curse, you know, break that cycle, because otherwise, you know, we, we continue to do what we saw and what we grow up knowing, knowing. Right. And be open to change, because sometimes people could tell you, but you could take that, you know, negatively, like, what do you mean I'm not doing this, this, and this, and you could get offensive, but being open to, you know, that critique and wanting to change to help your partner or you know, help yourself, you know, matter of fact, you got to be open and willing to make those changes. Definitely, because that whole stigma and mindset of just, this is who I am, uh, Mm -hmm. please, like, the moment you stop growing and trying to learn is the moment you become a fool. Like, that's not life. You should be trying to learn to the end of your day, you know? For sure. But but KG, I love what you said. Um, And maybe if you want to touch a little bit more on that, because I feel like we do see it, especially when it comes to our young men, where Mm -hmm. the father figures or the fathers are only prevalent or predominantly prevalent when it's sports. Yeah, I I had that growing up, man. Yeah, my my father, um, my father now is more active in his grandkids life, you know, my daughter's life than he Mm -hmm. was in mine's. So I'm grateful for that. But then for my older sister, um, I'm a little, I'm more stronger than her, so I could take it, but she, she holds everything to heart. So she's kind of, you know, mentally, you know, damaged, honestly, because she never had a, a real father, you know, support her being her life. So I'm like her father, her brother, um, her kid's father, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm everything for her. And that's not even healthy. Like you need to have a relationship with a man outside of me. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. my dad, my dad really that traumatizes a lot. And even now, like when I look at sports, you know, for my kid, I'm like, man, I want to give her the same energy I give her when she's playing basketball, running track and volleyball, or, you know, just for being great in school, for doing her homework, you know, 
I'm trying to be all supportive and all active, not just when it comes to something I'm interested in. I think that's what we got to get out. Like, you know, as a parent, even though your kids might have the same interest in you got to support whatever they're going to right. do, whatever they want to do and show them that same energy. So, you know, and that took me a lot too, because I had a, I had a stepson. I'm not going to lie. I had a stepson and I was the same way. Basketball season. I'm, I'm stepfather of the year. I'm father of the year. <laughs> when it's not basketball season, I'm like, well, you know, play 2K, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> right. you know, you can go outside, but you know, and, and, and she used to tell me, like, you need to do more, you need to do more. And my defense was, that's what my dad did. Like, he played ball with me, you know what I'm saying? He came to my game. That's all we had, you know? And um, it wasn't up until, you know what they say, you really don't know what you have until it's gone. It wasn't up until, you know, that situation ended when I realized, like, I could have been doing more. You know what I'm saying? I could have been more active. I could have I could have stepped up. So, you know, I had to live that. I had to learn a lesson, learn a lesson the hard way. But at least, you know, now I know moving forward that, you know, you got to give your kids more. You got to be full time 24 seven, not just when it's convenient for you or your interest. Yeah, absolutely. And I and I've said this once in a previous episode. It's one thing to be more present, but there's another thing to to have like real life conversations with your kids. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I said that, you know, I knew my mom to be the provider and the disciplinarian and all of that, but I don't know my mother. I don't know who she is as a person. Like, I want to know, like, what was your biggest fear? Like, what did you want to do when you, you know, what did you, what was your dreams of what you wanted to do with your life when you grew up? You know what I mean? And like, those are the conversations that I want to have with my future children, because I want them to know every part of me. And, you know, I want them to know the trauma so they'll know why I am the person that I am, you know, today. And I, I don't think that enough parents have those types of conversations. That's real. I don't know my father at all. <laughs> I don't know what he likes or what he's into, you know. Uh, all I know is basketball from him. But that's that's crazy you said that. That's I do that with my daughter. Like, even though she's at the age where it's TikTok, but I sit down with her, like, man, just talk to me. Like, what's going on in school? You know, what's bothering you? What do you like the most? How can I help you in anything, in any aspect? You know, like, just talk to me, you know. And I tell her everything, too. Like, I try to tell as much about cosign just so she knows what I do and not just what she sees, you know. Tell her what I'm interested in, because maybe she might be interested in it. You know, and I do feel like I agree exactly what you say. We do need to have like those conversations um, and be open. And what I also learned too is I don't know about y'all, but when I was growing up, if it was something that my parents didn't agree with, I would get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? Like, they oh like, yeah, for say, sure. Yeah. yeah. So listen, my son <laughs> called me a hypocrite the other day. <laughs> yeah. What'd you do? <laughs> Accept your truth, you baby. Right. <laughs> yeah, I said, I mean, he was right, kind of, but at the same time, <laughs> you can't you can't do what I do. I pay yeah. bills. You can't so well, what was he trying to do? We need the backstory, sis. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Run it back. Okay, yeah. so you know we are in the, the day and time of technology, so I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm on my phone more than maybe I should be. And I got onto him about being on his video game. I'm like, I'm gonna chunk it out the window. I'm tired of it. It's like, you're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. <laughs> He's like, you're on, you're like, you like you're on your phone. I'm like, you know what? This is not about me. <laughs> this is not, not about, about me. me. We're okay? not talking about me. We're talking about you. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah. and me just being that mom that does not like to physically discipline my kids oh yeah i want to bust him in his mouth i promise you I you can't do you can't get but mad at that young man because he called you out on your yeah, shit you he did <laughs> <laughs> he did and i was like you know and i and i i was like i mean yeah but i was about to say did you acknowledge that to him like i, I did yeah i did okay. yeah I, i'm i'm the parent i'm the parent who apologizes i'm the parent who listens to their kids and you know their thoughts and you know talks about their thoughts and what's going on you know uh in their mind so yeah I, i'm that parent i'm i'm the new age parent my mom was like that with us very transparent very like straightforward cut dry Just and i feel like that that, that makes your relationship stronger because there's like you said you know you don't know anything about your mom I, like i i like if I'm crying, like I don't, my kids can see me cry. Like I'm okay with that. 
because I need them to know that that life is real. Right. Shit is going to happen and you need to go through the motions and they see that because it's going to happen to them. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just that parent that's, that's like straightforward with them. I got to be that way too because, you know, I got a 13-year-old daughter so I'm like, yeah. man, I can't, I can't tell you, you know, not to do something that I've done. You're going to experience stuff at a young age that I'm not going to like, but just be open with me so we can have these conversations. You know what I'm saying? My parents would be mad. I get grounded. I get whooping. Yeah. I'm taking the approach like, look, I can't protect you if I don't know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? So just tell me if you're going somewhere you shouldn't be going, you're going to do it. So just let me know. That way I know where you at. I know if I need to come get you, what's going on. Yes. I got a little boyfriend. I know who I need to be looking for if something happens, you know, like. <laughs> Those, and, that, and that breaks the, and that, and that, that you know, that can start the cycle, the, you know, breaking the cycle of the, the quote unquote broken home. Mm-hmm. Like definitely just, just, you know, making sure that your kid understands you and you understand your child, mm-hmm. like for real. Because well, I, I now, promise you, go ahead, Star, I'm sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Um, because I, I mean, I know there, there were some situations that I went through as a child that, um, I expressed to my mom and, um, just because of the situation she was in, she, you know, she didn't care. And, you know, I had to deal with that for, you know, year on top of year. And it just, it fucked me up a little bit. And to be honest to this day, and we've talked about it or whatever, but I just feel like, again, like we were saying, like you should take accountability as well for, as a parent, take accountability for the things, you know, that you do do because you will mess somebody up mentally for life. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I I mean, I I hope, I hope that I'm not this way for life, but I mean, I, I still have some growing to do. So well, that's good that, that you acknowledge it. You know, that's important. Because that's some the people first walk step, around, honestly. yeah, just thinking like, I'm good, I could deal with it. And then, you know, they reach that point and who knows what might occur. So, and you know, I'm team therapist, counseling, life yeah. coach. So that's- I need to go see it there. And yeah. And it will, it will change your life. Fine. I definitely yeah. suggest it. <laughs> But I wanted to compliment y'all. I wanted to compliment Jen and KG because, you know, I'm about to be new to this parenting game, but I think the disconnect nowadays is that a lot of these, if we're going to call them new age parents, like want to be the friend first, you know, and there's no balance. And I think it's really important to still be like, no, I'm your parent. You know what I'm saying? So even if you don't agree with what I'm giving you, it's because I want you to be better than me. But right. I also want you to be able to come and talk to me and like, let, let you know, you know, let me know what's going on or about your little boyfriend or what happened in school or how you're feeling. That's very important. So that balance is needed because some of these parents, yeah. no shade, but whew. Yeah, so, shady. Shady. Me, very shady. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was very shady. Like, saying no shade shady. does not make it less shady. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask y'all this question. Do y'all think the kind of what I said earlier about people staying together for the sake of the children, does that having children before marriage, do you think that plays a huge part in broken homes as well? Ooh, I have a follow-up question to that. That's a good question, Dad. Hell okay. yes. <laughs> Bruh. Because to me, it would change the dynamic Bruh. of the relationship. If y'all live if together, I could do it. right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, baby. If, you, if y'all were together, right, and then y'all end up getting pregnant prior to making the decision, of being married, I feel like it changes the dynamic because at some point there may be a situation, whatever that situation may be, that may have been the demise of the relationship, but y'all decide to overlook it or continue to, you know, go through this relationship for the sake of the children. So do y'all think that plays a factor in it? I mean, I do. My uh, my parents been together 40 years and like, and they lived together, but they weren't like a happy couple. My mom is just now divorcing him. And I'm like, man, you should have then did that. And she was like, I did it for you and my sister. And I'm like, yo, you're not, you wasn't happy. You didn't have peace. 
and you don't understand how much stuff you took out on me and my sister because you wasn't happy. You know what I'm saying? If you would have left him when you should have, you could have lived happy. You could have gave me and my sister the energy we needed, but you know, with you sticking around, think you're doing better for us, you actually hindered everybody. Now, like now, what I've witnessed, I have I, I don't know what a healthy relationship looks like. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta like, understand, you know, some I'm sorry to cut you off, KG, no, but you like you have to understand, like sometimes not it, it, it it's not even sometimes it's not even for the sake of the kids. Sometimes it's for financial reasons. Sometimes it's because people are just weak and don't know how to leave, you know, for themselves. Um, or e- or I, even scared. You know, that's yeah. true too. Some people are, are scared to take that leap of faith. Yeah. 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 Mm. I, so I... Uh, here you go. No, but here's what? the thing. Like, I can see that for like my grandmother's generation where they grew okay. up in a different time. They were not mm-hmm. able to really have jobs in that age or right, um, right. like the lack of education or whatever the case may be. Like they stayed together because at this point, like of your life, you're middle-aged, older, like about to drop this relationship and you have literally nothing. Like you have no work history because of course my grandfather took care of the household. You know what I'm saying? Like that okay. generation. Um, so I could see the fear aspect in that, but I can't say the same for like our parents' generation. Cause I, really? I feel like we're all the same. No, I don't see that. Mm. I, for the financial, no. If, if you're just saying it for the financial, yeah. knowing that you, you're in a different position. Well- Okay, now, where uh, women have you're right. I will say this. I, I, I would say some, <laughs> no, you are right because some do, you know, to keep a certain lifestyle. Yeah, you, you can stay for that reason. So, just for uh financial gain, um, yeah, I, 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 I see what you're saying. I would say, I would say case by case, babe. go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> go ahead. I would say, like, as far as like the financial, I, I'm gonna agree with Desmond on that. Um, because my mom definitely stepped out on faith and like left and she we were raised in a two-woman household where my mom and her best friend they were both single moms was like okay we got this big house we got all these kids you know let's grind they we all here and we doing it so it, it really honestly worked out great for everybody because it was it was a healthier environment than what we would have been in or that we had just came from. So, I mean, you know, they did what they had to do. So I love that women do do that, do partner with their best friends and like use each other to get through life. (laughs) Right. And I feel like if a woman stays for financial reasons, more than likely she didn't love the man to begin with. She, She entered into the relationship for that reason. And so if that's your excuse to not, leave is for financial reasons i call bullshit well kg was gonna say something i feel like i'm gonna agree with him <laughs> <laughs> well, well i was gonna say i feel like it's a case-by-case basis because i will yeah. say this my mom um my dad was in the army so he traveled a lot and moved a lot right and another thing too my parents are both from panama the country so they moved here with nothing so my dad joined the army my parents got married my mom <laughs> pretty much was like a, a, she was in education, but she traveled with him everywhere. So like, she always had different jobs because they moved every two to four years. So she wasn't able, you know, to even sustain employment very long. She wasn't able to sustain going to school. So at some point she was like, well, the army gives you medical, they give you, you know, they pay for housing, everything is good. So she looked at that more so as, I don't have anything by myself because my husband has everything because of, you know, his career. So it was more so like, if I left, what do I have? I got to start all over. So let me stick with them for my kids to get through school, edu- uh, college, you know what I'm saying? Health insurance, et cetera. And then she was like, well, I guess now I can do my own. But really she left because she needed peace. And she got to the point where she couldn't tolerate, you know, being unhappy anymore. Her kids were grown, grandbabies. She didn't want to see them, you know, in this unhealthy situation, so. That's the nail on the head right there is when a person reaches their breaking point, like their end all be all, that is it. Like, that's it. I was just talking about that before, uh, before the interview started with my friend, I was like, man, when a 
when a woman is done, she's yeah. done. <laughs> done. It's a wrap. Done, done. Nah. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. real. Oh, yeah, they do. They just sustain so much, you know, harm and pain, and they just like, you know what? That was the last straw. Let me be out of there and be strong about it too. Yeah, man. Right. Yeah, man, man, man. I used to be. I wouldn't say judgmental, but younger, you know, I think like, why would women stay and da 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 and this and that, and it is not until you have reached that point where there is no turning back, looking back, and them tears you shed it. Mm -mm, I don't even have time anymore. Begging. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. So sorry, you said you had a follow-up question. What is this follow-up question? I did. So a lot of times, like the new generation, and who's an example I can use? Um, what is Tiny's daughter's name? Z Zani? Z Zani? Yeah, that. Yes. So she recently had a baby, and she's with a boyfriend. I believe just boyfriend. But I'm seeing a lot of comments where people are like, what if everybody doesn't want to get married? You know, marriage isn't for anybody. So that was kind of my backdoor question to yours is, is this generation setting us up for broken homes with the mindset of, well, not everybody wants to get married? And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not in the same house, but is that dynamic different? Oh, man. <laughs> I actually think it's been like the opposite lately. Like, really? I think people are like, really? Yeah, I think people are celebrating like long term relationships, marriage. Like, it's really like in a positive state. Like, even for me and my people, my friends, like, we like, man, we're not having no more kids out of wedlock, bro. Like, if we ain't married, we ain't having kids. Cause this baby mama stuff ain't, it ain't it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it. Like, seeing your kid every other week or yeah. on the weekends, that ain't it. Summers, that ain't it. So, yeah. You want to be sustained in a relationship with a partner that you know you can raise, you know, your tribe together. So, and I feel like you know, society is doing a better job of depicting it. You see a lot of these artists and celebrities, you know, being more open with their relationships and love. Like back in the day, rappers couldn't talk about you know being married or showing their wife, they had to be you know mysterious, they had to, you yeah, know what I'm saying? they had to be you they know, had an image to yeah. yeah, now man, you can be a rapper happily in love and married, and you still gonna get love from everybody. Right. Well, I, I, or, I Nick do Cannon, want to say, or you could be Nick Cannon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh We're talking about it, but let's let's talk about it real quick. I do guess. you think okay? Oh, let's talk about let's this. Talk do about it. Really, yeah. we have some oh, do you right? think do y'all as, as far as the Nick Cannon situation, how do y'all think that's gonna play out? Like, will that be um kind of an example of like 55 broken homes or <laughs> <laughs> or, <laughs> like that. Or, yeah. or, or is he gonna you know show love to every is he gonna show love equally to every yeah. child that he has and just make them come together as one like i like that's not possible that's you, you cannot tell me do, do you really think that he brought these women like in like do you think he had like a sit down with them like hey this is what's going on we're gonna do you 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 and I, you. we're gonna have these kids and we're gonna live this 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 and they're too life. close in age. Like he literally had a set of twins in June, and one baby at the end of June, like days apart. That's so, uh, that's wow. He wow. Heaven. So let's give the backstory of what we heard, right? And correct me if these aren't facts. But did he not go on a show and say um, that he's dealing with the illness, so he yeah, wants he's to, be dying, able to leave his basically. legacy? Okay. Yeah, he, he said that. Yeah, he's dying. Yeah. I mean, he said he's dying and. You know, he wants to continue his legacy with all these children. So I that's know. what that's that's why he's having all making impulse decisions. Well, I mean, he said so. If you go back to the financial factor, I feel like these women know now. Take away Mariah, right? So besides Mariah and right. her twins, I feel like there probably the was is like hell yeah, an agreement. <laughs> they're they're set. And they are giving him his legacy. And I, I, Jen, I do think he's probably bringing them together. It'll be somebody's cookout or a mm -hmm. holiday or something where they right. all come together. How would y'all feel if y'all were in this situation? Like he bought, he bought you guys, or like I say, like how would you feel like if he brought you together with this group of women? Women, like, hey, you know, we're gonna do this. This is how it's gonna happen. Like, would you agree for that? 
I would not. <laughs> I was gonna say she would have had to. <laughs> I I really would not. I it, it's no way. I just like, I just want to know the initial conversation. Like, what did he say? Hey, like, how did he get like, them all to agree to this? Like, hey, you know, I ain't got much more time to live. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really <laughs> just trying to make sure I leave my legacy, and I'm gonna pay you. 2.5 million off top just to have Shay, you gonna say no? So 2.5 million. <laughs> you're you're gonna have to give me a little bit more if you want me to be out here being a single parent. But your kids are gonna be taken care of if he does pass, like, right? For life. Your kids are gonna be taken care of for life. So this is just off the rip, just for him just doing what he do. Is it about the money though? <laughs> is it like for who? <laughs> It, right, for right. The, for the for the mother of his children, or for yeah, like if he offered two point five million, is it about the money and your kids being taken care of? Even if you didn't want like kids, would you just sit there and change your mind because you have two point five million, or like? Well, I think it's all asking. speculation at this point because it ultimately depends on, of course, the woman that he's asking. Because I'm pretty sure that he couldn't have had a genuine like full-blown I'm in love with all of these women simultaneously yeah. now not saying that it's not possible but I doubt it <laughs> so I think that's a very big factor in why a lot of these women would have agreed to even do something like that if they were aware at all because they couldn't I mean have... <laughs> let listen money talks to people money talks and Nick Cannon has made a name for himself um, I think that they know financially, whatever the agreement was, is that they're set and their children are set. And if they wanted to be moms or if they didn't want to be moms, they're moms now. Like, yeah, <laughs> they're moms now. But right. you know, we're all on borrowed time. So prayers to yeah. Nick. Like, I really hope whatever he's going through that, you know, his higher power, whatever is going to heal him because, you know, life is short yeah, and precious okay. anyways. But I think that with kids coming into the world, he'll provide, and that's what matters. I sure, think that sure. he will spread himself to where every set of kids and households gets. Oh, Nick, okay. Much <laughs> <laughs> yeah. love to Nick and his kids and all the baby mamas. Much love to baby mamas. Oh, y'all remember that? Why was I singing that song in my head the whole time? <laughs> Listen, we still it all that comes song full here. circle. <laughs> all right, so let's go ahead and move into the word of mouth. Oh. Ooh. We, we can't hear you, <laughs> Yeah, that that's that. We, we got the whole Bill Cosby and Felicia Rashad thing going on now. Quote me if I'm wrong. I don't. I don't remember the <clears throat> the exact quote, but um, she has no issue with him getting out, and she's you know happy about him being out. Um, just regarding those charges, what's what's the story? So there was some backlash with with Felicia Rashad because of her. Yeah, they had an issue with her being happy. Right, that, being... where she posted on social media. Right. right as being supportive of the release of bill cosby on a technicality i don't know what that technicality was i got it she said just so just so we let our audience know so her er, initial post read finally a terrible wrong is being righted a miscarriage of justice is corrected so that was her initial post and social media went crazy uh one half was she's insensitive how can she support this man the other half was like, I mean, she's giving her opinion. What are y'all tripping off? So here's, right. here's my thing. Um, she knows him. She's she's worked with him on set. She's known him for years. And she's probably never went through anything that these women have gone through. So she probably can't see him doing that at all. So if she wants to say what the hell she has to say, you should just respect your opinion and keep it moving. Now, I understand that this is, you know, a time where, you know, people are very opinionated and, you know, they can say what they want to say. But again, she's worked with this man for decades 
and she's never had an issue or probably had has never even heard of him doing any of this so um just me if i was her i i think i would uh have the same sentiments as her because <laughs> i i wouldn't have commented I wouldn't have said anything. No, I was just going to say, I probably would have commented. I wouldn't have gone so far to say everything that she said about the judicial system. Oh, well, yeah. Things. Okay. The, I, I like see. all of that, like that's too much. Just say, but I'm happy. She could have texted him. That he home. I, I'm happy he's home. He's able to get back to his family. But she said, she, she, still said. she still would have gotten hung. Yeah. Outside that's what I'm saying. She said I'm what happy. she said. And you know, people just need to if, if they didn't like it, okay. Well, you don't like it, cool. You can you can state your opinion as well and just keep it pushing. Well, and, and I want to ask y'all this. I want to present this question to y'all. So what or how would you feel? Say for instance, I'm pretty sure everybody has a best friend, right? Your best friend does something. We're not gonna say that specific thing. Right. So, but let's just say your best friend does something illegal and ends up going to jail. And you didn't know anything about it, but all you know is the love that you have for this particular person. Like, would you not show them love when they got out? It depends on what. It depends on what it, it was. What it about. Yeah, what it Because I'm not gonna say. I'm not saying. I'm not gonna say he didn't really right. kill somebody, like an innocent person. Like, no, I'm not. It's not free them no but if she did know the accusations, it's just if she believed that they were true or not. True. Right. So, you know, that's, that's the thing. Let me tell y'all my confusion. My confusion is Howard University brought her on and her opinion has stood in this whole case of where or who she sided with yes. or how she felt. Mm -hmm. So now you're trying to cancel her, cancel her <laughs> because is she is she... a, you know, what they considered an insensitive tweet, but I'm like, Tweet or She's not, you White know Sisters. exactly day one. So yep. that's kind of confusing to me, you know. And I just, you know, cancel culture is so thick. I and was then, just you about know, to say you that. have the HBCU that's really well known and prevalent. So I hate to see that happening, but I was just so confused. Like, but she's told us from Jump Street where her loyalty lies in the situation and how she felt about it. So I was like, all right. Yeah, so anything you say, you just gotta. Keep to yourself, basically, man. Right. Like, sad. It's unfortunate. You damned it. A wise man once you know. said nothing at all. Don't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I would not say nothing. I'm going to say what I got to say, y'all. And this is me. I'm going to say what I have to say. Y'all like, like it. Y'all don't like it, whatever what the case say, may be. But certain, certain subjects, you just need to just. I agree. Sometimes silence. Is, is the, best. the best response sometimes now i'm not saying mute yourself for society in the world however sometimes silence is the best response Des, don't worry I, about I, I can i didn't <laughs> i said i would have to agree with that god <laughs> you just been ready to chop my head off <laughs> Always. But I think that's a difficult position to be in, especially when it's somebody you spent so much time in your life with in your, in your career and building and growing. And we all know them to be the Huxtables, you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, it, that's a difficult situation to deal with, to hear those types of accusations about somebody that you've known for so long. It would be hard to believe. Yeah, definitely. But I will say, um, Mr. Huxtable Bill needs to calm down. <laughs> talking about he's looking to um, put on some type of comedy tour, sir. He sir. did say that. Sir, I'm like, calm ain't down. nobody no. coming to see you, Otis. No, 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 <laughs> no. Ain't oh. nobody coming to see you. Come on. It was like simmer down, Bill. Simmer yeah, down. Yeah, we still we still not feeling it, but you know, like just, okay. Yeah. That's that what you're A little too early for that. Right. 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 <laughs> too too way too soon. Y'all know he y'all know he on his last leg now. He ain't got but don't 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 get it. <laughs> what he do got uh, it. You know? Yeah, yeah. He got that little extra. But um, yeah, definitely. And, you know, just to let our followers know and that 
we do not at Mouthful TV take lightly the accusations that has happened, but it is something that we do want to talk about. And it'd be a safe platform to talk about it because it is our culture. Um, it is what we see. It's in the news. And we are uh, what we like to be an entertainment news platform. So for those that really were affected by him, you know, we wish you nothing but light, love, and healing. And for those that unfortunately were looking for a come up, you know, you, you can't it's play good. with that. You can't play with that. Not at all. And that's yeah. so... <clears throat> Listen, that's another that's conversation weird. for a different episode. That's another yeah. conversation for a different episode. Um, but that's I do weird. want to ask um, KG before we do wrap up. We do want to hear, let the people know who you are and what you do. So wait. we definitely I'm do excited. want to ask I've been you. waiting on this the whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> before we wrap this thing up, you sat here and talked to us the whole episode. So we just need to let the people know who you are and what you do. So let them know. And I ain't nobody. I'm just a bum off the street. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> now nah, I'm messing with y'all. Uh, again, thank y'all for having me. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the conversation. And uh, it's, it's good sometimes to talk about, you know, real life stuff, you know. Um, so I appreciate y'all having me uh, chime in on your subject today. But I'm KG, founder of Cosign Magazine. Hey. Uh, it's an award-winning media company. I'm good at the intersection of culture, business, creative and entrepreneurship. Um, we're a print magazine and digital magazine, so we kind of tell stories in print, podcasts, um, video form, produce two documentaries, and we have the annual Cosign Awards, which is a Black Tie Charity Gala, uh, once a year, highlighting the city of Dallas, entrepreneurs and creatives, you know, just trying to give them their flowers while they're here. You know, entrepreneurship and creatives are an industry and a group of people that tend to go overlooked, you know, um, everybody worships, you know, celebrities, the athletes, et cetera, but you know, there's people out here really chasing their dreams, making it happen. So we want to honor them for one night and tell the story throughout the years. So that's basically what Cosign is. You know, I'm nothing without my team. So salute to my team for helping me for produce this event, produce this publication, produce this company. And, and that's really it in a nutshell, you know, to summarize it all up. I do have a question for you. So yeah. what was the conversation that was had? I don't know whether it was with yourself or somebody else that, let's, that said, hey, let's start cosign like how did they come about man so before cosign i used to work for this magazine called ozone which is showing my age it was a this is a hip-hop magazine founded in orlando but based out of atlanta they moved to atlanta and it was just about hip-hop artists i did that for like two years um it was a great opportunity but they only like told stories from like the artist pov and i'm like man what about the managers the executives the photographers etc there's more people that have stories to tell and it wasn't the direction it was going in. So I was like, I just kind of removed myself from the situation. Um, I went overseas uh, for two years to work, to kind of like build capital, to save, help my family. And at the same time, I always had a plan that when I came back, I would work for myself. So I did two years, came back, uh, created a magazine. I didn't have a name for it yet until my sister, she needed help getting a car. She needed a, a co-signer. So she asked me she, if I can co-sign on a loan for her. And it just kind of hit me I'm like, man, I, I understand what a cosign means. My cosign can help her get a car. My cosign can help her get a house. I didn't cosign for the car though, but you know, <laughs> an idea derived from that and understood the importance of a cosign. So like, I'm gonna name my magazine that because that way I can cosign other entrepreneurs, creators, artists, and kind of give them that stamp and that support to kind of help them reach the next level and to obtain, obtain their dreams and goals. So that's where the name came from. That's why I wanted to create it. And you know, as time, went by, I kind of realized I need to do more than just the print magazine. So like now, of course, we got YouTube by you guys and we're building got a network. So giving other creators a platform to produce their own series, documentaries and podcasts under the Cosign umbrella. That's awesome. Does sis know the story? That that's how you oh, got yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Nah, I, <laughs> I was gonna say, she doesn't let you live that yeah. down. Like, yeah. nah, she be on my <laughs> She be on my head. She be like, you know, I named the company, right? Right. right. Exactly. Because that would be me. I'd be like, I need 10% of our profit. Yeah. I was right. like, yeah. I'm like, you're down. Awesome. <laughs> you're down. Be all right. I have a quick question for you if we have time. Um, yeah, sure. What would you say for other entrepreneurs as far as getting started that might be discouraged? Mm -hmm. Man, I would say uh, one of my favorite quotes is you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You know what I'm saying? So, You'll never know how great you are until you start. You know what I'm saying? You'll start, it may not be beautiful, maybe ugly, but just create something, anything. And then from there, you'll learn. You'll 
You learn what it takes to create something. You'll learn who your target market target market is. You learn if you have something worth, you know, giving it. And then usually your first product isn't the best, but what you derive from that will become something greater and greater. And then people will give you feedback like, man, if you should, you should do this, you should do that. And it would get to a point to where your business actually grows and becomes successful, but you don't know that until you start. So whatever it is, if it's a podcast, start. Start on IG, start on YouTube, start a blog. You know what I'm saying? If you're a writer, just write something, write a, a blurb, write, write long form on Instagram, just do anything. And then from there, you'll build your audience and then, you know, you'll just keep going. They'll tell you, people will tell you what they want, what they're into, just listen to them. You know what I'm saying? That's what I've done over the years, which I feel like I became successful. I listened to my community. Like they said, you know, we want more of this and I provided that, you know, um, don't get stuck in one thing. If I was stuck in my, in my mind, I would only be doing print. Like I'm obsessed with print. I didn't really want to do digital, but I had to understand that's where times are going. That's yeah. where the people are. So I had to, you know, I had to move to digital. I had to listen to the audience and, you know, gladly I did because now we're able to, able to sustain and keep it going. So I would say just start and listen to your community. Oh, you dropping gems, boy. That was good. <laughs> like, that was real good. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I appreciate y'all for asking me questions. You know, I'm, I'm all the, en- the other end a lot of the time. So you know how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yes. So, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I do have one last question. I don't know if anybody else has one. I just want to know how we can get on the cover. That's it. That's <laughs> all I need to know. <laughs> like, you know, I get that question almost every week. <laughs> we believe you. Yeah. I get that question almost every week. And I'm, I'm going to do a, I'm going to give y'all a, a, a very, what's the word? Political answer. Just email me. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Just email me. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I'll accept that. I'm, this is being recorded, and I'm going to send you a snippet of this in the email. Uh, yeah. Right. Nah. You said, nah. <laughs> per our last conversation. Right. Um, that's it right there. That is perfect that's email right. etiquette. Damn. Right. <laughs> no, nah, I'm messing with you. Uh, nah. No, he's not. Um, he's for real. <laughs> In fact, my wife right. acting up, guys. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Star, you want to take us out of here? Oh, is it me? Okay. I, I didn't want it to end. I was trying to get some more gems. I was like, this sounds great. <laughs> no, we just want to thank y'all. Season three, we are here. We have arrived. Thank you so much for all of the support. We hope to bring you a great season this season. And what a way to start it off. KG Graham with us, Coastline Mag. Be sure to check them out on all platforms, digital or print. Their website is super ridiculous. There's so many good things and for entrepreneurs. So thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Mouthful. You can find us on all of our platforms. We're going to be airing Wednesday at 7 every wednesday 7 p.m what That's was that right. and i have to do my shoulders like that because i get excited when y'all watch so giving me yes, disco ball to tune is in the baby moving and live chat it might be him moving moving <laughs> and grooving <laughs> but we appreciate y'all don't forget a taste of the culture check them out so many great things supporting black businesses small businesses supporting the movement y'all so check us out and until next time Peace out. Yeah.